All right, greetings, dear friends. It's good to be with you once again on our Monday night open forum. And the open forum comes to you through the facilities of the Midwest Center for Truth here in Northwest Arkansas. And it is the ministry of CMI Bible Research Center. It is a production of CMI uh, Audio Video Systems and it is brought to you through Ustream. So we're glad to have you with us tonight, and you possibly are picking this up if you're watching uh, on YouTube. Uh, and, of course, everything that we do here, as many of you know, is archived, and it's available to you 24-7 uh, through our website as well. So, I welcome you. Uh, some of you were with me this weekend, no doubt. And uh, you're with us now on uh, this Monday night session, so uh, welcome to it. Uh, while I was with you, I told you that we were going to be having a, a good week here, and, and I, I said we'll be making announcements about it. In fact, I, I said on Monday night, uh, we have with us uh, this week and here tonight, uh, <laughs> A real long time and a real close friend of mine and brother, Amen. Uh, Ole Anthony. Uh, Ole is the founder, president, and minister there of uh, Trinity Foundation, and the, and and the church is it the church on the block or just the block? It's uh, we call it just the block. Just the block, and. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a residential center uh, there where uh, a number of the folks that are bound together there in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus bought houses and it's a residential area it is not by any stretch of the imagination communal living it is a residential area and but it's occupied by those who are seeing Christ and so uh, we're just glad to have Ole with us this week. Uh, it came out of uh, some discussions we were having and, and actually some questions that we were having concerning uh, the, uh, the feasts of the Lord in Israel. Now we can call these the feasts of Israel, but they started out being the feast of the Lord. And uh, But, you know, to not quibble with words, we can certainly identify as the Feast of Israel. Uh, and Ole and I were talking about it, and, and uh, they've done, to say that they've done a great deal of research would be a real understatement, uh, but for a number of years they have focused upon what Jesus, Paul, Peter, James, John, all called the scripture. Search the scripture. That, that's what most today would call the Old Testament. But it is the scripture. And uh, for they are they that testify of me. And the testimony of Christ is found probably, I don't know what word to use. One of the, certainly one of the paramount testimonies of Jesus Christ is the feast, if not the very paramount, the feast, the feast. And uh, so Ole's with us here this week, and he's with me tonight, and we're just going to do some discussion. I'm going to let him talk. This week, however, starting tomorrow, uh, Starting tomorrow, we're going to have two sessions a day, uh, Thursday, Friday, uh, <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, we will be having a morning session and then a, a nighttime session. And we're going to, 
we're going to record these sessions and then we're going to put them up uh, on the internet via uh, our, our YouTube uh, program. Is that right, Raven? And uh, we, we don't want to, because we're going to have so many of these every day and on that regular time, we don't want to take the chance that some of these sessions drop during the time that we are filming and that we are putting them up live. Uh, so we're going to record them as it were in house and then they will be put up. Uh, so they will be uh, available to you. And this will be on a real timely fashion, will it not be? And so you won't have to wait long for them. But that's what we're going to be occupying ourselves with here this week. Uh, we're glad to have uh, Brother Bill Wilkerson with us. Brother Bill is here, and he's going to be here for a while. Uh, and I told him, I said, man, this is a good week for you to come because he come to get in some teaching sessions and searching the Scripture and being here and what we do. And I told him, I said, you've arrived at a great time. We're starting this with uh, a whole week of teachings on the feast. So Ole is with us tonight, and I'm uh, uh, introducing him to you at this time. And you will be seeing him uh, on Ustream. Uh, these CDs will also be available to you up on request through our website. Uh, and we trust that it's going to be a genuine time of enlightenment by the Spirit of God concerning the reality, the reality of Christ. Amen. Uh, and I trust that the testimony which is locked up in the feast will be revealed in the person of the living witness himself, Christ in you. I'm, I'm excited about this week, and I, I, trust it'll, I trust it will result in a genuine increase of Christ in those who turn their heart to know him. Well, Ole, it's good to have you with us tonight. May the Lord bless you, man. And... Uh, what, uh, in general, what is it that we're going to be looking at this week? Well, I can only, let me go back and just, I, my conversion experience, as you know, was January 17th, 1972. And in one real sense, I haven't learned anything since then. I've spent more years in the scriptures than I care to count. But it's, I haven't learned anything. It's, it, all that scriptures do is make me unlearn everything so that that Christ in me can be manifested. But the mystery that's, that's in me right now is that as I search the scriptures, trying to prove that what I'd seen in the conversion experience was wrong, <laughs> because I stopped to think about it and I really didn't like it because it cost me everything cost me my life and I had great plans for my life so I tried to prove that it was wrong so I spent I think you know this almost 12 years studying in a Jewish synagogue because they that's the only library that would let me in and trying to prove that the scriptures were wrong by if I, I made a deal with God that if there were any contradictions or anything that wasn't truth in the scriptures, I was going to throw the whole thing out. And so that's what led me. Not any kind of reasonable thing to like learn about God, but I was trying to prove God wrong. That's why I searched the scriptures. And I, the, the, as I searched the scriptures, especially searched the Old Testament and the New Testament relationship to it, there was no such thing as an Old Testament and a New Testament. The only scriptures were the Old Testament. That's all that Christ, and as you said earlier, that's all the disciples saw was scripture. And they testified that every scripture in the Old Testament testified only of Jesus Christ. 
And I begin to see this pattern. Every major event in Christ's life happened on or near one of the feast days. And I said, wait a minute, there's something hidden here. There's some mystery. Paul said, I must by all means return to Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. Origen, all the church fathers, Jerome, every believer that named the name of Christ for the first hundred years of the church celebrated every one of the feasts. And they must they must know something. And so that's what, and, and again, the first thing, the first miracle that Christ did was to change the water into wine, which is the meaning of the scriptures, to change the water, the type of the human race, into wine, which is the bride of Christ. And all the scriptures are connected with the bride and his love for the bride, his love for the church, which is the bride of Christ. And that, so, so let me just give you a, a sampling. He was, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit on the eighth day of the Feast of Hanukkah. He was born on the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah. He was baptized on the Jewish Feast of Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur. It, 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 we could sp I, we spent ten years on that feast alone on the Yom, on Yom Kippur. He he was crucified on the feast of Passover, buried on the feast of unleavened bread, rose from the dead on the feast of first fruits, and his spirit was shed in all flesh on the feast of Pentecost. That's just a sampling. And so we've. We've celebrated the feast as a community in Dallas for since 19, I don't remember, the early 80s, and maybe before, and for, for Passover. But they've become the most precious time of the year for us. And we're always going to a feast or coming from one. But they show a living picture of Jesus Christ in a body of people. You can see it. You can feel it and touch it. It's the word being made flesh in us through the feast. Not just the efficacy of the scriptures, but also through the feast. And it's a marvelous sense of joy and freedom that I would like the whole church to know and see. That's why. That's yeah. in a nutshell what we, we're going to talk about. Good, good. Well, we're looking, we're looking forward to it. Uh, a lot of this will, in these presentations, will gather into themselves a lot of what is, uh, what is familiar to us to, as being called uh, Bible prophecy. Uh, the uh, no doubt the the book of Daniel uh, and this afternoon Oli and I was talking about uh, the uh, 70th week of Daniel uh, how that came to be fulfilled when it was fulfilled just uh, happened to have something to give you and what is going on and I have this I have this You've already, yeah, you've given it to me. Oh, okay. Good. Um, uh, yeah, we we we've got this, and and we'll we'll be uh, he'll he'll be dealing with with uh, with uh, bringing some of this in, and uh, uh, but what what I'm trying to it, it, most all of us know. Those who are watching us regularly and, and throughout the church world, really, that most of what is put forth as biblical prophecy, Bible prophecy, is taken out of context and 
set forth way beyond its time, its time having already come to its fullness in Christ. And so Bible prophecy means very little to anyone except as some kind of a prediction of future events. When in fact it's actually the testimony of Jesus Christ. And, and you will find in this search this week, uh, and, and, and Ole and I have talked about this when he's here, when I'm there over a period of time. Uh, the feasts have such a such a central part of the fulfillment of what we call Bible prophecy of which all of the prophets spoke and it's just that most of the church world today hon is truly ignorant concerning these feasts and the rich beyond rich testimony of Christ that is there that that is there uh, to me it's it's it is a it's not just a shame it's a travesty that there's actually elements in the Christian world, in the church world, that have relegated what is called the Old Bible, the Old Testament, to a position of just non-significance, except for some prophecies which are still looked at as a prediction of future events. And that, that's not only a shame, it's a travesty. Because therein is the testimony of the one who lives in you right now. Amen. Right now. And the reality of him that is set forth in those feasts is to be set forth in you by the Holy Spirit right now. Right now. That we are, you know, set together in the feast. <laughs> uh, so I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to this. Many of us know in a general way that reality and, and that it, it's fulfilled in Christ. But, uh, but uh, Oli and, uh, and, 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 and very particularly Oli. Uh, and the whole fellowship there uh, in Dallas uh, have focused on this uh, testimony uh, in a, a very deliberate way uh, with, with just tremendous uh, richness of, 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 of testimony, and, and, and that's true. Uh, the church world has changed, and I'm, I'm, I'm not on my soapbox, <laughs> but the church world has, has come from those feasts to the Christian holidays. Can we just talk about those a minute? Uh, Can we talk about those holidays? Yeah, go right ahead. I'm just going along here till, till you decide to say something. Well, I was just listening to you till you decided to <laughs> No, stop. you go right ahead. No, no. you go no, ahead. I'm kidding. <laughs> Easter. Celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Easter is the feast of Ishtar, Babylonian fertility goddess. That's where we get bunny rabbits. And Easter eggs, because it's a celebration of a fertility feast, the sexual indulgence feast. And here we say this is when Christ is resurrected. I know. <clears throat> we have the feast of Saturnalia, which was a feast to bring back the warm weather, because it happened in the wintertime. 
and that's when we celebrate Christmas. That's when we celebrate the birth of Christ. And because we've adopted over the years the, the, the feasts of pe the pagan world and put a Christian name on them, but the problem is the pagan world put its name on the Christian feasts. And that's what's so sad today, that how can we celebrate the resurrection of Christ with a fertility rite yeah. and a bunny rabbit? How can we possibly know his suffering and, and understanding the fullness of what he did by having Easter egg hunts? Where did that come from? That's sick. And it's infected the church. And that's that's what we I'm not going to get on a salt box. I mean, that's what they are. The church is, much of what the, today is called the church is, doesn't deserve to be in the church's bathroom. The people we investigate were best known for investigating religious fraud. And, uh, unfortunately, we're the only group in the world that routinely investigates religious fraud. And yet there's more fraud in the name of God than any other kind of fraud in America, in the world. And that's a travesty. Yes, it is. The church says nothing about it because they're afraid they'll lose their government privileges. But to, to, to be a, a church leader and watch in the name of God people stealing billions of dollars from the poorest members of our society and saying nothing, there's something wrong with that. And so we started investigating, and we, we found <laughs> these, 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 most of these guys, the only Old Testament scriptures they know are the ones that have, give you a reason to send in, them in their money. Oh, they call them, their, I found a little gem today. Yeah. <laughs> a little yeah. pearl of wisdom today. No, you didn't. You found another way of conning some other poor person. And I, don't get me in my soapbox, but yeah. I guess I already am here. I, you, you probably know you, you're, you've got the Antichrist on as your guest here today because that's what the, these guys we investigate call me. And they've, I've been sued so many times. I'm not an attorney, but I could play one on television. <laughs> the, the lawsuits are endless against us. And as you know, we took, I took, a, long before I knew that televangelists existed, I took a vow of poverty because of my own evil. And I make $50 a week, plus room and board. But I'm not, I don't, I don't care anything about poverty. I just knew my own greed and my own, I had to, I could con myself into anything. So I had to know, I had to, had to protect myself against myself. That's why I took the vow of poverty. But in terms of prophecy, after Christ, prophecy isn't foretelling, it's simply forth-telling. Yes, it is. And that's all we're called to do, is forth-tell forth this mystery of the completed work of Jesus Christ. And there's nothing that shows that more clearly and with great specificity than in each of these feasts and fasts of the Lord. And that's what we'll be looking into this week. Amen. I'm anxious to uh, in 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 our classes. I'm I'm anxious to uh, to look at uh, have you two and look at with you because we'll be searching this out every day here, Amen. every day, and beyond beyond these meetings. Uh, uh, the uh, the the uh, <laughs> the feast of tabernacles. Hmm. The Feast of Tabernacles. In the church world, of those that are interested in in the fulfillment of the feast. But see, I see. All right, let me go ahead and say what I'm going to say. Those that are interested in the fulfillment of the feast, many of them in certain movements, certain movements 
uh, I'll, I'll, I'll name one, you know, this, what is called the sonship movement. So there's so many elements to that that I'm not speaking against anything. I'm just trying to tell you guys something. But what is called, it's a sonship movement. And even among that, and these are so-called spirit-filled folks, they're looking for the fulfillment of the Feast of Tabernacles. And, uh, uh, and in, 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 in a very man-centered, in my opinion, in my opinion, a very man-centered uh, way. And they'll, they'll say this, they'll say, well, you know, all right, uh, we, we know and have evidence that uh, that Passover was fulfilled. But they relate that, their knowledge of that is related to the fact that Jesus was crucified during that time, you know, 2,000 years ago. And to me, that's not, see, and I could, maybe, maybe I'll be proved wrong on this, but to me, that's not the fulfillment. The fact that while he was being crucified and all of that was taking place there, it was, it was during Passover, but so, so, that, so that's the fulfillment. To me, and, and no doubt that was a witness to the Jews. There's no doubt about that. Okay, that, that was a witness to the Jews. But to me, Passover is fulfilled in Christ, not just by Christ at a certain historical time in a certain historical place. Though all of that's true. It, it, it was a real time, real place. But that there's a fulfillment of Passover that is in him to be both revealed and worked in me and in you, his body, the church. And I think it's the same thing with Pentecost. We, 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 our idea of Pentecost is what we read in Acts 2-4. And, and multitudes of people who are by, by Christian name <clears throat> Pentecostals. Pentecostals. And, and many denominations in the, among the so-called, or not so-called, among the called uh, Pente, Pentecostals. And the only definition that most of the, being one, being raised in that myself, from, 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 from my new birth, uh, being raised in that, uh, the, 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 it's defined primarily as speaking in tongues. Uh, but that's, that's not the fulfillment of Pentecost. Neither, neither was Pentecost fulfilled, in, in my opinion, simply because of what took place in the upper room. Again, that was a, 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 a witness, a testimony to Israel. Uh, but we look at it from the outside. You know, they heard a noise, the wind blew, spoke, and, and that's what we talk about. But as, as Ole will say, and has already said, and, and, and he'll, I, I can certainly say it and declare it, but he will bring out elements of that that probably most of us haven't thought about. And that's what, and that's what needs to happen. But my point is, just that as an event, to me, is not the fulfillment. It's fulfilled in Christ through his dwelling in me, in his church. To me, these feasts are always and ever ongoing because they are part and parcel of who Christ is. Amen. So, what of then tabernacles? Because you see, on the surface, there's nothing that 
most can put their finger on and say, okay, here's where that feast was fulfilled. Because, you understand what I'm saying? Because it wasn't the same thing. See, Jesus wasn't hanging on the cross. Uh, there wasn't a bunch of disciples in the upper room speaking in tongues. So they're looking for the same kind of fulfillment. So they say it's not fulfilled. It is fulfilled. So I'm looking forward to coming to, uh, to, to the Feast of, of, of Tabernacles in that, in that way too because Christ is the richness of the fulfillment of these things. Not, not just dates in history and times, though I know those are there and I know they're important that it, it's important that they be there. I know that. But hon, just looking at and Ole was fixing to get on that a while ago, but he'll, he'll get on these things when he's sitting here uh, and, and has the time to do it. Uh, when, he, when he was talking about Easter and resurrection and, and Christ. Uh, because it is. The more you see Christ, hon, and I'm not. God, I got better things to do than preach again e Easter. I have no problem with anybody hunting Easter eggs and having an Easter bunny. Just don't connect it to the Lord. Just, you know, go hunt Easter eggs. Uh, leave the resurrection out of it. Uh, is, is my, uh, you know, my policy. If you, you know, want to celebrate Christmas, give all the gifts you want to and, and Santa Claus in the chimney. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we don't know what kind of a holiday we've got there. Uh, and it just gives, you know, crazy people and idiots uh, the opportunity to, you know, march in the streets and protest something. Uh, Christ. Christ is the true revelation. The feasts are not so much there, the testimony of him, richness, but he's the revelation of the feasts. And it should be in us to be revealed in us. You know, in so tabernacles is what I'm talking about, Ole. I'm looking forward to our dis to your discussions on on the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, I know that gathers up the trumpets and atonement. And well, like each each of the the, the major feasts, well, are the most important. I won't say major. The most important feast each has eight days. Yes. There's a feast of of uh, tabernacles, a feast of Hanukkah, I mean, Rosh Hashanah, the Hanukkah and, the, and, and Passover all have eight days. And there's a reason for that because this, no matter how long you think time lasts, from a spiritual standpoint, there are seven days of linear time. And the best that can happen in that seven days of linear time is Christ's ascension. On the eighth day is the marriage supper of the Lamb. That celebrates the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of the... Uh, that's too has already happened. But but we must we, we we must be apprehended by what happened. Yes, it. Are we are we are partakers? We, we we must be partakers of what happened. Exactly. And, and and that can only happen. That's why the word Paul said something incredible. He said, "I'm determined to speak of nothing until it's been worked out in me by Christ Jesus." The word has got to be made flesh in us. Yes. In order for there to be any transformation in the world, we can't just have a bunch of people who get. The only Bible school in the scriptures, the only Bible college in the scriptures is a school for Pharisees. <laughs> True. I mean, the teachers and preachers and apostles were raised up in small communities that their life was tested daily by their, not just their words, somebody could be, their, their, they were, you know, Paul lived with the people two and three years, not, he didn't just come in, in a crusade. I mean, the, his words were tested by his life. And that's what has to happen in us. We ask for, he, the leaders of the church have to have the vulnerability to be open and a, and a true heart of a servant, not sitting up there, and, you know, and to be worshipped himself. And that, but it's all about what you've said about we, this 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 time and space is what the word for the world. Is ion. It's all everything in that world. As God said, if the love, if you love the world, the love of the Father is in you. 
Well, that just means love there just means give breath to, give importance to. It's the Greek word agapeo, which is not agape. It's the, Greek, the verb form of love, which means just to give importance to. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. If you give breath to the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. But we've got these guys. I mean, we've got too many preachers that give me too much breath to the world and not to the, the resurrected Christ. But again, it's not about them. It's about, we, are we giving it right? Are we That's saying That's it. it? I don't much care what other people are doing or not doing, except when it, I don't like to be sued. That's, that's just too much, too time consuming. And I'm tired of being called the Antichrist by everybody, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, well. But I don't, I, I want us, the only reason I'm alive is so that the people that are under me can be, see that they're, that they have some zeal, number one, and that the word would be made flesh in them, that the word would be tested by their very life, not by some crap they're saying with their mouth. Anyway, that's, right. that's my hope, that this week will help the word become flesh in the people that listen to your ministry. And, uh, and that these questions about time and space and eternity and fulfilled and not fulfilled will become meat. And that's my prayer and my hope and my reason for being here. Amen. So, uh, we could talk about any of them to begin with. I don't know how much time we have left tonight, do you? Well, we can start out on... We can start out on something kind of simple, um, or important, and simple and important. Um, and that is this, this whole... What does it mean... What is the difference between eternity and forever? And what does forever mean? And 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 you know, and, and we we have this this. Well, let's talk about that. And we will, but I'm saying that we have this this idea because we speak English that we're the greatest language, and it's the greatest language, and we're the people that rule the world and whatever. Do you know what? The worst language to learn anything about spiritual matters is is English. It's it's because English is a language of ownership, the language of commerce, and that's why the the gospel has become so bought and sold because it's the English language, a language of commerce. You can't say in Hebrew that I this is my Bible. The best you can say is this Bible is near me. And that's the truth for most languages. But we preach ownership, which only enhances the isolated self. Uh, and that, that's, we'll get into that. And the idea that, that you know, we, we think eternity means a long, long time. Well, no, it doesn't. It means no time at all. Yeah. And, and forever just means as long as time lasts. You know, I'm going to be burning in hell. And the, the, Hell is just the dump for the New Jerusalem. There's not there, nothing there for punishment. You just you're gonna go to the dump if you didn't come through there. <clears throat> so the whole we get everything upside down, and we think we've got something to share with the world. That's it's it's ludicrous. We're sharing apostasy with the world. And the, 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 what's going on in South America and and in in, in Africa now with the the, the the most popular preachers there are the are the success theology preachers buy it you know blab it grab it it's it's how can I mean that's what we're best known for abroad is 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 teaching heresy is <laughs> yeah but you know that's why you, you know we, we, you and I you're the only person I ever met that believed the same thing I did that uh, that happened I, I didn't believe it this is what happened in my conversion experience I saw my death and I didn't like that and I never met anyone else that says that says that I had to die and that's why you and I have stayed friends for so many years uh, the only thing about you that used to drive me nuts was you were too religious 
<laughs> but you, you know, you were a preacher. You were taught to be religious. I was a pagan. I, I know nothing about how to be religious. So I'll probably offend everybody. But the difference in time. I mean, this. You know. Oh, I'm going to go be with my. We have. We've been, we've been taught fairy book theology, and it's comic book theology. You know, well, there's a snake that's. And then the snake, and he caused even to. No, the snake has always been eternally in every in every ancient society. The snake was a metaphor for the human mind. Unless you have a talking, you believe in a talking snake that can eat that only eats dust. No, it's we have been eating the dust. We are the talking snake because we are nothing but the vessel for the evil one. That's who we are, is a vessel for the prince of the power of the air, and there's no other. You're not an independent self. You've invented yourself, every one of you. You've taken a, little, taken a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit over here, and you got a little bit from here, and then you pretty soon you invented yourself. Then you try to put Christ's name on what you invented. It's an abomination. Christ requires your death and his new life. No longer you at all. You're not in the picture. And that's what we'll see in the feasts. Amen. You know, that's true. That is true. And that's, well, that, see, that's ground zero. I am dead. That's the basis of Christianity. Zero. But it's not taught at all. Well, we, we, we realize that. We realize that. Many, you know, we, but that's the only thing that actually works. You know, if that didn't happen, you didn't get baptized. You just got wet. If, bar <laughs> if that wasn't your burial, <laughs> and then true. you'd become a zombie. That's why the world is like zombie movies. That's a testimony of what the world is, a bunch of walking zombies. They're walking dead men trying to do stuff. It's true. Uh, we agree. It it is the the uh, the foundation of it. The ground, as I said, the ground zero. It's it starts right there. Uh, my me trying to live is just an abomination. Well, it's 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 not even an abomination. It's worse than an abomination. It's the antichrist. Well, that instead is instead of abomin Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The instead of Christ. Now that's what. Well, do you know why we're named Trinity Foundation? Not after the Big Three, or not after the Trinity River. We're named after the Trinity because that's the name of the first atomic bomb. And that's what I did for all those years while I worked for the government. I made we tried to keep other countries from getting atomic weapons, and the, co wep the countries that did have, we set up monitoring systems all over the world. And that's why, and, and that's why I had we had to calibrate our tests our equipment with our tests. And so I got sent to the Anawitok Islands in 1958 and we we're testing a new technology for a hydrogen bomb. I was on that dumb island for three months alone with nothing but that those bad GI food things to eat so I just ate coconuts. That's probably why I'm so skinny. And for every day, they'd get the countdown, and I'd get the equipment ready, and then, no, they know it's caught, because it was a new technology. It was a hydrogen bomb. And it, it had to, the wind, it, there couldn't be any wind, because it, 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 was, it was supposed to be 3.7 megaton equivalent. Now, the bombs that destroyed Hiroshima were 20,000 kilotons. This is 3.7 mega million tons. But when it finally came, it wasn't. 3.7, it was 9.3 megatons, 9.3 million tons of TNT equivalent. And this blast, it didn't destroy the island, it dissolved it. It was as if it never existed. And then that shock wave hit me, and not me and the equipment into the ocean, but what that shock wave did to that island, I mean, what that explosion did to that island is what God did to me on the, the moment of my conversion. My, my inner being melted, dissolved. And I, I, mean, and I, I, saw, I, I, I didn't believe anything I believed before. I didn't want anything I wanted before. 
but I quickly resurrected myself. Yeah. But that's why we're named Trinity, because it's an, that's what we should be like an atomic. Every time we speak to somebody, it should be a type atomic bomb going off in their mind to destroy this crap that they call religion. And that's what the feasts do. So, I think I went on a rant just then. Did I go on a rant? I sometimes am accused of that. On a what? A rant. No, no. That wasn't a rant? No. Some of us go on rants. Well, I know you do. <laughs> yeah, I live in a rant. <laughs> well, well, blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm looking forward to this week, folks. And I'm looking forward to having uh, Ola here with us this time. He and I go back to the 70s. I think. 72. Yeah, 72. Yeah, well, yeah, right back, you were to, boys right well back to the conversion. <laughs> yeah. That was, I'm a new believer for just a few months when I first met you. Well, we've had a, we've had a glorious relationship, and Sometime. it's been more than just a friendship, but it has been everything that a friendship is. It has fulfilled that, but it's been a glorious relationship. And not only that, but with Trinity Foundation there too, those folks that have been there uh, from the beginning, uh, just as young people, man, young people, they, they, many of them, I mean, they, well, most all of them came, came just right in off of the street. And I don't mean like beggars and homeless, maybe some even of that, but I mean, they, they didn't really, most of them come out of religion. None of them did. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and, and, and so it has been a, a freshness. It's been a joy of mine, and is to this day, to be, uh, affiliation is not the word that you would even want to use, but joined to in spirit, in truth, and in Christ Amen. with uh, this group of believers, this fellowship of believers. And uh, so we're looking forward to our week together uh, and what we will uh, be able to uh, to put on record, to put on record here, and make it available uh, to uh, those who who really want to come to a place in their heart to see Christ, to know Him, and this is what it's all about. It's, this is this is this is it the knowing of him till Christ be formed till Christ be formed uh, you know in the, me and in you the I'm sure it's from our perspective Christ only came to preach to the poor that's what he says the first but the poor has nothing to do with money it's the word Paktos, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it right. But it has nothing to do with money. It's, it has to do with you're no longer gaining any sustenance or satisfaction from what you've been doing your whole life. And it just means running out of yourself. Yes, you, you, you get yeah, bored yeah. with yourself and you're yeah. bored with what you're doing and there's no more satisfaction. I know billionaires that are poor. Yep. because they have no satisfaction and they have no courage to admit it. But it, I want you to admit your poverty in the audience, otherwise you'll never understand what we're, being, what we're talking about. You can't, you can't know the fullness of Christ without you, your emptying. And in fact, the mind of Christ would have you empty all the time, 24 hours a day. You turn off this evil one and you become a vessel for the Holy One. And you create a low pressure zone by your emptying. And that's how 12 men turn the world upside down, the same way we form a hurricane. You create the low pressure zone by your emptying. And 12 men emptying, boom. They had never known a low pressure zone like that. They turned the yeah. world upside down. Just think what we could do with just the resources right here if we all did that. That mind of Christ made himself of no reputation that I mean 
That's the word kino. It means emptied to the point of a vacuum. Yes, yes. And that's what vacuum. we lack in this world. We have too many people trying to know Christ by their mind and too little knowing. You, in the scriptures say you can't know him. You can only, his, his life has to become manifest in you. No man knoweth the Christ but the Father. No man knoweth the Father but the Son and the, to whom he will show him to. So you're a new creature in Christ if you're born again. You're not just Pete or Jim or Oli or JW. You're a new creature. We still use those names, but they have no more meaning. They have no more power. The power is only in our emptiness before him. And we'll try to show you how that's associated with a feast too. Amen. Well, I think that's about time to call it a quit. Well, we're looking forward to it. We really are. And uh, it's just a joy. I trust that this week will be the beginning of many more weeks just like it here. Uh, we all know here, and it seems like that for many of us that it's been a long time coming. But we all know that those of us that are here talk about it. And it's, it's, we're not talking about the buildings, we're not talking about the property. Honey, this, these things just facilitate something far greater <laughs> and more eternal than they are. No. But we, 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 we changed the name here a while back, and I explained that probably a month ago or so because some had uh, uh, made comments about it, uh, not here, but in other places. Uh, Center for Truth. And I, I told you when I said that uh, on that broadcast, I may, it may have been in an open forum, but I said, I'll tell you, I said, uh, Beck beat me to the term I'd really like to use, Glenn Beck. Hmm. Truth lives here. Because that's what it ought to get down to. Hmm. Knowing Christ is the truth. Truth lives here. <clears throat> I'd like for the sound of that truth by ministry, and I'm, I'm going to use the word ministry not as it's, it's, it's almost in the world become an ugly word, but to me it isn't yet vessels chosen of the Lord <coughs> I'd like for this to become indeed a place out from which the sound of the truth is heard Amen in every medium possible because I think that throughout the Lord's body and without there are those who are some even without knowing but they're the who are waiting for seeking for listening for the truth so this week is certainly a time dedicated to that and I'm looking I trust that it will just become here in this place a regular recurring uh, reality and the Lord will lead us and guide us and direct us in that so we're looking forward to this week and then having you join with us uh, via internet or you're welcome to get in your automobile wherever you are and come on down here and <coughs> sit right here with us in this building. Uh, we'll help take care of you. So if you want to come and join with us this week, come ahead. Otherwise, you'll be with us electronically but 
we look forward to this week, and I'm, I'm glad that Ole is able to be with us this week, and uh, so we look for, we, we're looking forward to it. That's about the end of our time tonight. Uh, if there's a way that we can be of a service to you, and if there's a way we can serve you better, please let us know. If you have questions, let us know. Write a letter, send an email. You can contact me on my phone. You can do anything, just don't send me a text message. <laughs> Call me. I like to hear your voice. Communicate with us, folks. Uh, in any way that you can. So it's good to be with you. And uh, again, looking forward to this week. May the Lord bless and good night. Amen. Amen.